Hey, my name is Dylan with Live Life Creative. Thank you for joining me for this video on how to import photos into Darktable. Now, I did a previous video on the same subject, um, but that was in an earlier version of Darktable uh, 3.4.1, I think it was. Uh, ever since Darktable version 3.6, they changed how that works. Uh, now I'm on 3.8.0 and it's still the same way. Um, and I've gotten a few questions actually on the previous video, like, hey, this isn't looking right, like it's different now, what, what am I supposed to do? So I just wanna do a, an updated video on how to import photos into Darktable. So let's get into it. So up here in the top left, you have the import module and you have two options. Before these options used to be uh, file and folder, I believe, and now it's add to library and copy and import. So add to library is for photos that are already on your photo drive. So whether that's an internal drive in your laptop or computer, or you're using an external drive, the photos are already there where their home is going to be, you know, more or less permanently. Copy and import is a little bit different. It's for photos that are still on your SD card and need to be copied into, copy, uh, into your drive on your laptop, computer, external drive, etc., and then import into the target table after that. So first, what I want to do is actually copy it and import. So I've got my camera here. Got a couple of photos that I took for this video that I want to import. So they're still on the SD card, and you can see on the screen Nikon D50, a D750. Um, if we open this up. You know, you just see the SD card and these are your photos from yesterday. So these photos from 357, they're on the SD card. So we need to copy them from SD card to the computer, to the laptop, and then import them into Darktable. So let's do this. Click copy and import. Um, in your places in your top left here, um, I'm using Linux. So home is a particular folder on uh, Linux. Pictures is a particular folder media storage <laughs> i couldn't spell the ge on there it ran out of characters that's my photos folder so nikon d750 that is the sd card that i have so once you have once you click on places here you look in folders so here's nikon d750 dcim 103 d750 and d750 is the you know folder that's at the lowest level so you can see here on the right, these are all folders that, uh, all images, sorry, that have not been imported into Darktable yet. So that's why they're selected, they're a lighter gray. Uh, you can see now darker gray and there's one selected that's a lighter gray. And you can actually click here, let's actually click on the smaller, this is an eyeball icon, just the thumbnail of the pictures, which is handy. If you click this eyeball icon here, it'll go through and show you the thumbnails for all of the images in that folder. It does take a little while to show all these thumbnails, so sometimes it's not really worth it if you already know exactly which images you wanna uh, import. So you can highlight those, and these will be the images that we import. So if you look at these two options at the top, recursive directory and ignore JPEG images, if you click ignore JPEGs, then it's gonna do exactly what it says. So this is for the instance where you're shooting raw files and JPEGs, and you only want to bring in the raw files, you would check that box. And I usually actually do have it checked. Recursive directory means if I'm like here and I want to import all folders that are under Nikon D750, so anything that's in DCIM, if I had multiple folders here, it'd be more. If I wanted to do that, it'll show me all the pictures anywhere that are in any folder filed under Nikon D750, or if there's multiple folders under DCIM, only the folders that are filed under DCIM. So I don't want all those, I just want this 15 of them. Override today's date, I don't need to do that because at least the date's right, even if the time's not. Base directory naming pattern and subdirectory naming pattern, this is a little bit more confusing, especially with the file naming pattern in there too. So, base directory naming pattern, if you click this browser icon, browse icon, you can click around to your drives and find where you want to save your images. I don't have a folder set up yet, so I'm gonna do click new folder. Um, I organize by date, so 2022, today is 1-17, uh, oops, 17. 
and I'll call this, I'll call it Nikkor camera because that's the camera that I'm taking pictures of. And create. And now you can just click open. Now what I do, I create a, an originals folder, a raw photos folder within whatever project folder I'm doing. And this is what your subdirectory naming pattern can be. So I would just type in, I also call it by the same name date, Nikkor camera originals. So this will create a folder of this name within this location. So that's what's confusing to me. Like, why does this have to be two different lines? Why can't it just be the same line? I don't know. Keep original file name. I'm going to change it. If you have it checked, then you won't be able to change the file naming pattern. Now I'm going to change this to Nikkor camera. So you have the ability to add variables in here. Money sign, dollar sign, parentheses, file, underscore, name, parentheses. This is a variable to insert the original file name of whatever the original file is. So wherever it says this piece here, it's going to insert underscore DKA6766 or underscore DKA6767, etc. for the rest of the files. File extension variable is, you know, .nef in my case. Um, and there's actually a lot. <laughs> insert emoji. I didn't even know that was an option. <laughs> Wow, I didn't know you could insert emojis here. That's hilarious. Definitely not gonna do that though. There's a lot more variables you could put in here. I don't have them memorized, but um, that's something that you can look up separately from this video. Um, you can keep this window open or else once you hit copy and import, it'll just close. So if you wanted to do like multiple imports without having to go back and click this button again and again, you can check this box instead. So copy and import. Boop, 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 boop. You can see down here the progress. And boom, there are my images. They're all ready to be edited. Uh, obviously need some exposure corrections, you know, just some close-up images, stuff like that. So yeah, that's how you import using copy and import. Now what I'm gonna do is remove all of these from the library without deleting them from the hard drive. And so it's as if I never imported them. Like Darktable has no idea they exist anymore. So what I'm gonna do now is add to library. So the image files are still on my hard drive, but they're not filed, they're not imported into Darktable anymore. Darktable has no idea they exist. So now, just to demonstrate the add to library, add existing images to the library. Now you would wanna to go to wherever you, whatever drive, internal, external, whatever, that you save your photos on. Come down here to folders. I'm gonna uncheck the cursor directory or else this is gonna get crazy. Um, and then find whatever folder, I have it under Nikkor camera in the originals folder. And here's all those images that we just looked at, imported and then de-imported, I guess you'd say. And all you have to do, a lot of these things are the same same deal. So I made a mistake earlier when we were doing copy and import. It just selected all the photos, whether or not they are imported already, because Darktable assumes when you're doing copy and import that they're all new images. But now it knows like, hey, if you're looking at an actual internal or external drive, these might already be in Darktable. So in this case, since I de-imported them, they're not in Darktable anymore, but you can select that if, like these are all photos that I already have imported into Darktable. So none of them are selected because these are already imported. So back to our, our fo uh, folder here, they're not in Darktable anymore, so they are selected. Um, and now all you have to do is add to library, can select none, select new, which is all of them in this case, or select all, which would include already imported and new photos. Um, you'll notice here that there's no opportunity to do like file renaming or that whole subdirectory and directory and all that business. It's because they're already on your, they should already be on whatever drive got all of your photos stored on. So that's why you don't have the options on here. So just click add to library, they import, bada bing, bada boom. You're ready to go. So I hope that's been a helpful uh, video for you. Pretty short one, honestly. Um, but I've gotten some questions on the old video. So I wanted to make sure that I kept at least kind of up to date with one of the main huge things that you need to do with Darktable. So I really appreciate you watching the video. If it's been useful, uh, like the video, subscribe to my channel, all that good stuff. You know what the deal is. And thank you for watching uh, Live Life Creative. I'm Dylan. Uh, thanks for spending time with me today.